ladies and gentlemen, please clear the aisles. We have streaming availability in the art gallery. Please clear the aisle. You may stand in the back of the room or in the overflow in the art gallery, but we have to clear the aisles. Thank you. We will begin in two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is overwhelming the crowd we have tonight and we are grateful for you. For the safety of the group, we have arranged for live streaming in both the Sisiski room and here. I know how much we want to be together, but please, if you are standing in the aisles, if you could find a spot or if you are willing, join us in the Sisiski room um, and back in the gallery um, just for the safety of this room. Welcome. We're going to begin. Thank you all for being here with us today. I'd like to ask everybody to stand and join me in a moment of silence for the victims. Thank you. Forty-eight hours ago, more than 900 murdered, 2,315 injured, civilians, women, children, elderly, and soldiers, soldiers protecting their homeland. 130 taken hostage, held captive inside Gaza. 3,500 rockets launched indiscriminately at towns, villages, and cities throughout Israel. Young people at a music festival in celebration of peace and love. Children hiding in their rooms. Parents and grandparents sitting for a Shabbat meal. People waiting for the bus. Murdered by the hands of those that want to see Israel and Jews wiped off the planet forever. This attack against Israeli civilians is incomparable and unprecedented. And the magnitude of this tragedy is still unknown. Not since the Holocaust have so many Jews been murdered on one day. The days ahead will not be any easier. The death toll will rise. The pain will widen ever further. As Israel takes justified and divisive action to protect its citizens, more innocent lives will be lost. As the war continues, and it will, we must not forget how it all started, with an unprovoked, horrific, and devastating act of terror. My name is Daniel Staffenberg. I'm honored to be the CEO of the Jewish Community Federation of Richmond. And I'm really sorry to have to be here tonight. At this time, it feels right to gather together, to take comfort 
in each other and to lift our voices together in solidarity, to take time to mourn the dead, pray for Rafua Shlema, a return to health for those injured, and for the release of the hostages. Israel needs us to respond, to speak loudly, and to be a light unto the nations, even in this our darkest of days. So how can we help? First, by being here today and remembering the love and the care that so many in the community have given us, Jew, non-Jew, our many elected officials, and so many who have said we are with you. Our partners in Israel, the Jewish Agency for Israel, the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, the Israel Trauma Coalition, our first responders in coming to the aid of victims of terror and their families. But today, their teams are also suffering. Many have relatives who are injured, missing, or now engaged in dangerous combat in defense of our country. You will hear tonight about the Federation's opening a mailbox. Money is one way to help. 100% of every donation you give will get to victims of terror and the organizations that need to rebuild their infrastructure. Thanks to the infrastructure that so many of you make possible of our annual campaign, we acted immediately. And we will continue to do so, and all of your gifts will get to where, need, where needed. In the coming days, we are going to activate you to be a voice for Israel, to stand up and make sure that the narrative remains strong. Please make sure to follow us at jewishrichmond.org, follow the e-news, and please don't let that one email follow away, fall away and not get opened. We will remain in touch. By being here this evening, you give strength to each of us, our collective Jewish community, and our presence and voice give strength to our Israeli sisters and brothers at their time of need. I'm sure there will be many more ways in which we, as a community, can stand together and support Israel in this dark time. Thank you for being part of this communal response. Am Yisrael Chai. I'd now like to invite Cantor Sarah Beck Berman and Rabbi Scott Nagel to the podium to start our program.
I have no other country, even if my land is aflame. Just a word in Hebrew pierces my veins and my soul. With a painful body, with a hungry heart, here is my home. I will not stay silent because my country changed her face. I will not give up reminding her and sing in her ears until she will open her eyes. I have no other country, even if my land is aflame. Just a word in Hebrew pierces my veins and my soul. With a painful body, with a hungry heart, here is my home. I won't be silent because my country has changed her face. I will not give up reminding her and sing in her ears until she will open her eyes. I have no other country until she will renew her glorious days until she will open her eyes. I have no other country even if my land is aflame. Just a word in Hebrew pierces my veins and my soul with a painful body, with a hungry heart. Here is my home. Thank you both very much. We're now honored, uh, hopefully via Zoom, uh, in a very busy Embassy of Israel, to be joined by Deputy Ambassador, uh, or Deputy Chief of Mission, sorry, Elav Benjamin. Let's hope this works. Thank you, Daniel. Good evening, everybody. Shalom from uh, Washington, D.C., from the Embassy of Israel to the United States. Thank you for inviting me. And um, thank you for for joining and showing this very strong support to all of you from the uh, the Jewish Community Federation and members, representatives, elected officials, both federal, state, and and local. I thank you for this support. And we thank you, I'm saying this on behalf of the State of Israel, for your ongoing support in general and now in particular. I can't begin to describe how heartwarming this is for us as Israelis to see the support, which is a bipartisan support, which is including everybody from all sides, all political sides, all religious sides, all denominations, and all religions. And this is something which means so much to us to show, to show this solidarity, to see this, uh, um, this show of support, an unwavering show of support, which we're uh, seeing from the administration, from the president down, from Congress, from communities, from organizations. We're seeing this worldwide, and we're seeing this first and foremost here in the United States and from the United States. It was just on Shabbat morning, Saturday morning, Simchat Torah, celebrating the um, holiday of, uh, of Torah, of completing the reading of the Torah and beginning the new cycle, something which is of... Uh, Jewish tradition for so many years that my brother and his family who live in Ativa Sara, which is the closest neighborhood village to, uh, to Gaza, adjacent to the Erez crossing, heard the sirens and immediately ran into, uh, into their own safe room in their own house. For the next 12 hours, they were in the safe room from time to time, running outside, making sure everything is okay outside and charging their phone because there is no electricity socket in the safe room and then coming back in. And literally, my brother literally holding a pistol outside the window to make sure that nobody comes. After 12 hours or so, there was a very short and small window of opportunity. They managed to leave Nativa Sara and uh, find uh, refuge if you want with my other brother close to, uh, closer to Jerusalem. The story of my brother is perhaps the easier stories com- compared to the other stories that we've witnessed 
seen, heard over these past few days. It's something that he's been suffering and living for quite a number of years living there, but never in anybody's dream or nightmare could anybody anticipate such a, such a thing that we've seen now and that we are ongoing in these days and these hours, day and night. What Israel has gone through and is going through is really unprecedented. We are marking now 50 years to the Yom Kippur War, the 1973 war, which to this day, for those of us who remember, those of us who were around during that time, is seen as probably the most traumatic event of the state of Israel. This surpasses it in so many ways. Having hundreds and hundreds of Israelis killed, slaughtered, bodies mutilated, kidnapped, taken prisoner as prisoners, children, elderly, Holocaust survivors as well amongst them. This is something that nobody in their bright mind could have ever thought of uh, that would happen. And no human being that calls himself a human being would ever conduct. And what we're seeing now with, uh, with Hamas is no different than what the world has seen with ISIS. And the way that the Western world or the free world has treated ISIS is the way that Hamas should be treated. And we will chase every single one of them. Those who perpetrated these attacks, those who conducted them, those who are sitting aside, everybody. And this is a clear message that I hope that they are getting. And if they haven't got it yet, they will, they will, uh, they will get it even clearer in the coming days. Because the war that they declared on us, which they will regret for even thinking about, is something which will last for generations, as the Prime Minister of Israel said just a few hours ago. For generations to come, they will remember. And this is something that they will never forget, and we'll make sure that they never forget it. At this point of time in Israel, everybody is united. And it's true, the past year, has been a difficult one, a challenging one, with different voices within Israeli society, pulling in different directions. And perhaps this is one of the reasons the Hamas thought that it could, it, it could attack now, thinking that Israel is weak. What they didn't perhaps anticipate or expect is that it's at times like this that Israel unites and comes together and speaks in one voice and acts in solidarity with one another in Israel and outside of Israel. And what you've been doing as friends of, of Israel within the Jewish community and the Federation and across the country here, and we've seen this across the world, is something of unity and solidarity, which means so much to all of us. To my, my brother in Etiva Asara, to anybody living in Sderot, to anybody living anywhere around between zero to 80 kilometers outside of, uh, of Gaza, which is the range of the missiles, which have actually exceeded that. But that's the range of the disruption of uh, the day-to-day the day -day life for Israelis. But the disruption to Israelis has gone beyond the 80 kilometer range because we have to date about, I would say, 300,000 Israelis who've been recruited on reserve duty. And people are lining up to join, including from here from the US, the number of uh, Israeli citizens who are here, who are coming to the embassy, going to other consulates to renew their passports or to, help, to have us help them get on the El Al flights to Israel, to come and enlist and assist and fight is also both heartwarming, but also shows the solidarity and the fact that Israelis, no matter where we are around the world, we are one. And as you sang earlier, Ainli Eretz Achert, I have no other country. This is exactly where we are. We're looking at events and the president related to, our, our president related, uh, related to this 
the number of uh, people who were killed exceeds per, in one single day exceeds what we've seen even in the Holocaust in this regard. And this is something which is mind boggling. And to see these atrocities is just unbelievable. And what we call for you and what we are asking for is for your continued support and continued show of solidarity in your voices, through legislations perhaps, through declarations, through lighting buildings, hanging flags of Israel all over the place, and to show Hamas and to show the rest of the world, including, yes, Iran and Hezbollah and any other entity that is out there to promote terrorism and fear, that the only way forward is the way that we believe in, in the developed world, if you want, in places like the United States, places like Israel. And the same way that we've seen the solidarity following 9-11 uh, here, this is the type of solidarity that we are already seeing now and we hope to continue seeing also coming forward in the next days and weeks and beyond that, coming also here from here in, in the States. And we count on you very much on this uh, support and on this um, uh, show of solidarity in so many different ways. So thank you very much for your ongoing support and for your warm words. And please continue that. And as you ended earlier, and we continue saying today, Am Israel Chai, people of Israel are alive, and we will continue. Toda Rabba. Shalom. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm Rob Slotnick, the chair of the Jewish Community Relations Committee, the JCRC as we are known. It's the Jewish community's primary community relations voice and policy advocate. Our focus is to speak out and build partnerships to combat hate and anti-Semitism. Today, we are all here to let our voices be heard. We are resilient and we are standing up against Jewish hate. We are here to let everyone know that we are steadfast in our solidarity with Israel, but also in our commitment to pursue an inclusive, fair, and just community. The outpouring of support gives the Jewish community hope. We sincerely thank the United States and its leaders for making it unequivocally clear that the United States stands with Israel. I have a, uh, some comments from Governor Yunkin. He apologizes for not being able to be here, but I will read them. Over the past few days, news pouring out of Israel has shocked us. Thousands of lives lost, thousands more injured or held hostage, all at the hands of true ruthless evil. This is a difficult moment for Israel, for America, and for the world. Today, across the entire Commonwealth, our flags are lowered in honor of these lives and in solidarity with loved ones and families. Across time, across space, the Jewish people have shined as a bright light in the darkest of times, demonstrating a magnitude of resilience, a depth of courage that knows no bounds. Wherever hate shows itself, the root is the same, and none of it is acceptable. Let me be very clear, hate in different forms will not be tolerated, and we will not tolerate it in our commonwealth or anywhere. We will stand strong against those who wish to do harm to Israel and the Jewish people. So let me be unequivocal and total in my support. We stand with Israel, and the Jewish people. Thank you, Governor. So it's especially uplifting to have the support and presence of so many elected officials and community leaders with us today. So I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize you. Please rise briefly as your name is called. Senator Tim Kaine. 
Uh, Rep Representative Abigail Spanberger. We, ha we have a long list, so maybe we should clap at the end. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears. Uh, Senator Siobhan Donovan. Delegate Betsy Carr. Delegate Larisse Ard. Um, Delegate Schuyler Van Volkenberg. Delegate John McGuire. Delegate Rodney Willett. Henrico County Manager John Lucas. Henrico Sheriff Elisa Gregory. County Supervisor Frank Thornton. County Supervisor Tommy Brannan. Superintendent of Richmond Public Schools, Jason Kamras. We have um, Meredith Weisel, the regional director from the Anti-Defamation League with us. We have the FBI special agent in charge of Richmond, Stanley Medor. We, we really are so grateful for your presence and thank you for your support today and always. Oh, Jennifer McClellan, of course. Sorry. We are so grateful for your presence and thank you for your support today and always. We ask everyone to stay tuned for ways to be engaged in the future. And again, we are grateful to all of you for being here and supporting Israel. Thank you. Just in case, are there any other elected officials that joined us? Um, we, we can joke. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, the overwhelming support, and, and we don't make to make light of, of their attendance here, you need to know that our JCRC does amazing work on a day-in, day-out basis to help uh, build our community, not just within the Jewish community, but outside of, of the Jewish community as well. We really are grateful for all of you being here, and we look forward to your longstanding support. It's now my honor to introduce Rabbi Sherry Grinsteiner of Congregation Oratid, who will lead us in a little thought and share a personal message. During the Six Day War, I was a toddler who did not know of the measures taken by the IDF to keep my community my Moshav, situated on the 1967 borders, safe. In 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, I was a child who saw my community being mobilized and knew that among the IDF soldiers protecting the country were my three older brothers. By 1982, the first Lebanon war, I was a soldier in the IDF. Yet, it was during the first intifada holding my baby that I understood what real fear is. And in the second intifada, now with three children, then I knew we were protected when an IDF unit was sent to guard my community. In 2014, Mivza, Operation Mivza Tsuk Eitan in Gaza against Hamas, protecting the citizens of the south of Israel. It was now my son, Eitan, my son Eitan, who was a soldier in the IDF. And here we go again, nine years later, fighting Hamas in a war that does not yet have a name. How can you name a war fought against citizens 
that are murdered in their homes, where the enemy kidnaps 85-year-old women and two-year-old babies. And again, it is the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. They are our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters. They are called again to defend our people, to defend us with their sacrifices, with their heroism, with their lives. They are protecting our country. If you are able, please rise for them and join me in the Hebrew and the English in a prayer for the Israeli Defense Forces. Mi sheberach avotenu Avraham Yitzchak v'Yaakov hu yevarech et chayalei tzva hagana l'Israel ha'omdim al mishmar arzenu v'arei Eloheinu migvul ha'levanon ועד מדבר מצרים ומן הים הגדול עד לבו הערבה ביבשה באוויר ובים ייתן אדוני את אויבינו הקמים עלינו ניגפים לפניהם הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור ויציל את חיילינו מכל צרה וצוקה ומכל נגע ומחלה וישלח להם ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם ידבר שונאינו תחתיהם ויעטרם בכתר ישועה ובעטרת ניצחון ויקוים בהם הכתוב כי אדוני אלוהיכם ההולך עמכם להילחם לכם עם אויביכם להושיע אתכם ונאמר אמן. Please join me. He who has blessed our forefathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob May he bless the fighters of Israel defense forces who stand guard over our land and the cities of our God from the borders of the Lebanon to the desert of Egypt and from the great sea into the approach of the Arava on the land in the air and on the sea May Hashem cause the enemies who rise up against us to strike down before them May the Holy One blessed is he preserve and rescue our fighting men and women from every trouble and distress and from every plague and illness. And may he send blessing and success in their every endeavor. May he lead our enemies under a way. May he grant them salvation and crown them with victory. And may there be fulfilled for them the verse. For it is Hashem, your God, who goes with you to battle your enemies. And let us say, Amen. Amen. So Daniel asked me to introduce myself, which is fine. Uh, no one here has been able to speak tonight. You've listened to all of us. I'd like you to say back to me, Anachnu Achad. Okay, we are one. We're freedom-loving, democratic people, progressive, looking to make sure that not only anti-Semitism, but racism is snuffed out everywhere in the world, including Israel. I'm the president of the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee. We are the largest Jewish humanitarian organization in the world. We have about 1,100 employees, 500 of whom work in Jerusalem and around Israel. And we see, on average, 55 to 60,000 clients a day in up to 70 countries, including countries that are totally war-torn, 
like Ukraine and now my beloved Israel. To give a sense of the terrible situation that exists in Israel today, I want to tell you about what my day was like on Saturday, on Shabbat. Of course, Shabbat is a day that I never take phone calls. You've got to have a day off. You've got to go to shul. You have to think about God. But this Saturday, I was calling employees that live in the south of Israel to see how they were doing calling our professionals in Jerusalem to make sure they were okay. And unfortunately, not every phone call went through. And I knew things were very bad. I'd like to tell you the harrowing story of Netta, a JDC staff member who lives in South Israel. She wrote, I am updating that I experienced a terrible day today and so did many others in Israel. Terrorists infiltrated our Moshav by air parachutes, and we were forced to remain in the bomb shelter in my home. We were cut off without electricity, and we had no phone reception. In the afternoon, we managed to get out under fire with the children, and only, de de only then did we realize the magnitude of this incident and disaster. During the fighting, my husband's two brothers were murdered defending the Moshav. In addition, 15 other members of our Moshav were murdered as well. We are with my family now, and I'm still very worried about my grandparents and aunt who are in Kibbutz Beri, and I'm hoping for good. Thanks to everyone who asks, how are we holding up? Sometimes we just have to put this terrible situation in the words of one person. Stories like these are, are really reminders of the toll this crisis is taking on everyone in Israel and also speaks to the extraordinary commitment of the communities and in the, within the country of Israel. I've been asked to give the prayer for Israel and if I may, I will now. Sovereign of the world, accept our plea on behalf of the state and people of Israel. Pour forth your blessings on the land and all who call it home. Sure. May your laws of kindness guide its people, and may the teaching of your prophets live within their hearts and ours only to do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. Awaken your spirit in the Jewish people and the whole human family. Implant within us all patience and mutual respect. We play... We pray for strength of body and spirit to journey to the land and to be a true friend of the land and its people, a lover of Zion. May life there become Shevet Achim Gam Yachad. Brothers and sisters dwelling together and in every corner of the earth, Spread your shelter of peace over the house of Israel. Strengthen the will and the stamina of the people of Israel and the soldiers of the state of Israel. Let their spirits be resilient and their use of arms pure, valiant in a war, ever striving for peace, though. May they become and overcome all of our enemies, as you guard them in the shadow of your wings. For this and this alone we pray, make peace in the land. May all its inhabitants be blessed, and may this vision of your prophets soon be achieved. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, 
and neither shall they learn war anymore. Amen. Erev Tov, good evening, friends, dignitaries, dear colleagues, and honored guests. October 7th, 1973, I penned these words in my high school diary. Two days of the war. We did not sleep last night. There's no school today. We ran to the shelters at the sound of the siren, and Abba, Dad, was drafted with many others. We hear there were lots of casualties. We hear it was bad. I'm confused and I'm scared. Fast forward 50 years and evil struck again, this time with devastating force and ruthless cruelty. Innocent Jews, young and old, are being taken hostage and murdered simply because they're Jewish. These are horrific and catastrophic crime, and this time I'm watching in horrors and disbelief thousands of miles away. Thankfully, my family, who immigrated to Israel on the heel of World War II, is safe. However, our dear friend and son of a very good friend of ours, Hirsch, who actually went to our preschool, room six with Sharon, um, has not been heard and has been missing for days and has not been heard since Saturday. My worry extends to many Richmond, Richmonders who have been called into active duties or the reserve to serve. Those families I would like to recognize, and if you're here and to stand up and your children are serving in the army right now, I'd like for you to stand up and be recognized. I know that many of you <clears throat> in the audience also have family and friends in Israel, and I can imagine the deep concerns you share. So for some of us, it's personal. It's very personal. In the book, The Impossible Takes Longer, which, by the way, is a must-read, Daniel Gordis writes, Israel's core purpose was to be a, na a national home for the Jewish people. The state of Israel is the country that the Jewish people created to save itself, to transform itself. It was meant to be a country in which the Jewish people might begin to imagine a future very different from that their experience has been for the past 2,000 years. So, we still do everything we can, we will do everything we can here in Richmond, Virginia, in the diaspora and in Israel to defend it because it is our homeland and because we don't have another choice. Israel, just like we did in 1948, 1967 and 1973, and many in between, with God's help, or as we say in Hebrew, Be'ezrat Hashem, we will win this war. David Ben-Gurion writes, suffering makes a people greater, and we have suffered much. I would like to conclude and share with you a part of a message that was sent by all JCC, to all JCC leadership by the JCC Association, and it reads as follows. Notwithstanding its, its extraordinary achievements and its powerful position in the Middle East, Israel, as we see right now, remains vulnerable. And its people are on the front of the lines. Let's make sure they know that we have their back. This war, like all others, will in times find Israel triumphed, as we know. But already, the cost feels like much more than we can bear. But bear we will, because bear we must. 
We mourn those who have been lost, whose life have been lost. We pray for those swift recovery of those who have been injured. And we hope for the safe return of all hostages. On behalf of the staff and the board of directors of the Weinstein JCC, I'll express our unwavering support and profound connection to the land and the people of Israel. Our commitment to Kalal Israel, the unity of the Jewish people, is resolute. Thank you for being here. And it's quite overwhelming to see so many of you in our community, in our community here, the support and solidarity of Israel. Sending prayer, much love, and strength to the people of Israel. I'm Israel Chai. So I want to close the program tonight by thanking you all for coming and standing with us in solidarity with our family in Israel. I am Amy Nissenson. I am the president of the Federation and very honored and saddened to be here tonight. Sorry I have to stand in front of you to do this. Um, it is heartening to know that all of our community rabbis, community members, elected officials, the deputy chief of mission from the Embassy of Israel and others have come tonight to show support. Your presence helps us to begin to recover from these unexpected, horrendous attacks. I was sickened when I woke on Saturday morning to learn of these hor horrific attacks by Hamas and the panic, fear, and devastation caused by their attacks. It reminded me how important our Federation support system is, along with JDC and Jaffe, our partners on the ground in Israel, who are there to offer financial, medical, and emotional support. The Richmond Federation has opened up a mailbox that will be used to directly support those affected, rebuild, and in, rebuild infrastructure, and care for those in need. Thanks to this system that is in place 24-7, 100% of all the gifts made will be used to support Israel. We have also been in touch with our family in our partnership city of Hadera. We have shared our messages of love and caring, and we will be there for them, as we will be for all Israelis over the next days, weeks, and months. I hope and pray that the solidarity, messages, and feelings from tonight will only continue. I know that many of us in the room are hurting, and, friends, and our friends at Jewish Family Services have, have made counselors available, and their number is on the screen where you can reach them. I'd now like to invite Kenner Beck Berman to join us on the stage again, and if everyone could please rise, she will lead us in the singing of Hatikva.
Thank you very much for being here tonight, for beginning our process of recovery and grieving with us. This concludes our program. Please um, remain safe, uh, care for each other, love each other, and stay in touch.